Hierarchies are a necessary aspect of organizational life. The Eric and Mark Show Playground Rules podcast is not arguing against that. What we are pointing out is that several organizations aren't doing a good job at monitoring this natural occurrence and actually in their practices are circumventing the natural order of things by allowing personality and social clout to outshine character, talent, drive, and work ethic. What is the natural order of things as it refers to hierarchy? In the natural order of things, the most productive member of a group should have the biggest professional and financial reward. Instead, because there is a flaw in the mechanism of how humans select their leaders, other more affluent members of a group are allowed to usurp the pay and rank deserved by others by either stealing credits for the idea or using their relationship with the executive to leverage personal and professional benefit. In the natural order of things, the person better able to create group unity should be at the top of the group because unity and cohesion of effort are paramount to the success of any group. In fact, in the definition of leadership, the ability to influence people to perform the task at hand is its most critical component. However, because several human organizations favor personality and relationship over character, just like on the playground, the most liked or well-connected person finds their unearned way to the top. I spoke to somebody the other day about the playground rules and acts phenomenon, and they made the following comment almost instantly, as if happy to debunk the veracity of the statements made at the playground rules and acts podcast. They said, paraphrase, isn't this theory allowing people who haven't been promoted or have been on some level overlooked by the executive to find an excuse to live like a victim? The answer is no. We are not saying any of this to allow people who feel down on their luck or unfairly relegated to play the victim card and live as such. That would be unproductive. When seeking to understand the phenomenon that holds us back, the purpose is to then devise a plan on how to work through it. Each person has a tremendous responsibility for their own success. A person that seeks success should train and educate themselves daily. They should develop a solid work ethic and work on being a strong team player. They should have a standard of excellence and work towards it. They should have extreme ownership over every aspect of their life that they can control, either partially or totally. But, in the playground rules phenomenon, we are seeing that in fields where leadership has the prerogative of deciding who advances and who doesn't, and is based on social biases of who is more liked, in a clique, and on who's friends with the executive, what else can this person do but leave? What of that can they own and fix? So our mission is not to change the human group dynamic, where who you know is more relevant than what you bring to the table, even though that would be the ideal. Our goal is to put the ball back in the person's court so they can have more of a say in their professional fate. So yes, we are calling all organizations engaged in favoritism, nepotism, and unethical promotional practices to stop the games and to stop making other adults play games. But more than that, we are equipping the job seeker, whether currently employed or seeking employment for the first time, with the knowledge they need to quickly identify as early as during the application and interview process if the organization they think they want to work for runs like a playground or not. The playground is a ruthless place, where it is not the strong and intelligent that survive and thrive, it is instead the coolest and most connected to the top that have the only chance to grow in the organization. Your current interview skills may have gotten you a position that you applied for, but once you got in, how many times have you had to watch a promotion or pay raise go to another member of the organization just because they had more clout than you with the executive? There are organizations out there that do things right. Why get a job with any organization only to find out that it is a dead-end position? when you can learn to ask questions that will get you the right position in the right organization. Playground rules are real. They are also known as inner office politics. At school, your options are limited because there was only one playground, but in a professional life, you have options. You don't have to endlessly endure bullying culture, nepotism, favoritism, or any other form of inner office politics. You can do things the hard way and just apply for a job, get the job, and then be stuck in a horrible work culture that is prevalent on the playground, or... You can learn what questions to ask during your interview that might help you understand the work culture before you are stuck in it. Getting jobs isn't easy, and sometimes leaving them is even harder. Yes, you can quit, but then what? After quitting, as you are seeking to line up your next interviews, you will be entering into them as a quitter, an unreliable employee, and in the awkward position of having to explain to the hiring panel why you left, which will put you in the predicament of saying something that you will regret about your previous lousy employer. Which, by the way, will put you in a very undesirable spot of being the kind of person that badmouths your employer. And nobody wants to hire that kind of person. Yes, you can get a job in an organization that runs like a playground, insert yourself behind enemy lines, and then devise a complex plan to play the game and subvert the odds. But is it worth the time that that will probably take? There's nothing to be gained by getting a position that may ruin your chances of getting a better one. It is always better to do all you can to understand what you're getting into, and unless you plan to conform to being a lower-level employee the rest of your life, it is imperative to do your homework to ascertain how the organization you are applying for does business.
And lastly, we're not advocating that you leave every time things don't go your way because you are not going to get promoted every time you apply for it. We are not saying that an employer is nepotistic just because they picked another member of your organization over you for a position you wanted. And we are not saying that you shouldn't seek to have a good working relationship with your boss because that will make your work life more fulfilling. But if your employer, the executive, is a good leader, they will also be seeking to solidify a positive working relationship with you. Having a good relationship with everybody at your organization is a desired goal you should have, but shouldn't play a role in how promotable you are. You can blindly accept the job, or you can learn to ask better questions that could save you years of mental anguish of playing a game that you probably won't win, because one of the biggest downsides to doing business on the playground is that it has no rules.